Ah, video comments probably mostly uh, from different places and things, different commentary I suppose. Um, I did watch the first two episodes of Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, <laughs> the commercials really really did do me in. Um, this is so bad on the internet just because they play the same commercials over and over. You know, each break they just play the same ones over and over and there's like, they don't got more than three commercials? I mean, fuck. Um, but anyway, you know, and it's on Fox and you're just saying right there, I mean, Carl Sagan is spinning in his grave kind of a thing, right? I mean, the Warren Mayhem channel, you know, please. Um... You know, but these people seem all comfortable with what they've done with Carl Sagan's little project and turned it into this this thing, this monster they made out of it. Um, but it really was just such a nothing. I was just, you know, I didn't have high expectations. I, you know, I don't really like the Grassy Tyson guy. And he kind of demonstrated that, yeah, he's, he's okay as a stage clown. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you give him the whole stage, he's just a clown. And... He just didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't speak to me in any way whatsoever. And half of what he said just seemed like a pile of crap. Um, uh, well, not crap, crap, but you know what I mean. It was patronizing, you know, nursery school approach. It was Bar Barney the Dinosaur. They might as well just got Barney the Dinosaur to do the show. And it would have been a better show. I mean, it's, it was that, yeah. It was, it was that dumbed down. Um, so, yeah, no good, no, nothing, it didn't, it didn't have any feel, it didn't feel anything like the original, um, and, uh, there's such glaring omissions and stupidisms, um, there was one point, in, you know, the, you know, he made a lot of mistakes, but, you know, just, you know, one little part where he suggested there may be life, you know, we don't know how life originated on Earth. And we, yeah, we sort of know. It's called abiogenesis, okay? That we know it went from chemistry to um, reproducing chemistry. And there's your life form. And we can go pretty far back. I mean, the, uh, you know, prokaryotes and such. Um, so, you know, that was sort of annoying. You know, the suggestion that it, it was transported here from another planet. <laughs> you know, why, why, why even go there? And if, if that were true... One would suspect that different varieties of that life would have landed here by now. You know, that it wouldn't, if it happened once, like by, by their logic, right? Um, you, you know, and it hasn't, and there isn't, there, there hasn't been any invading life of a slightly different form that landed in any puddle anywhere and, uh, you know, put its flag in the earth, um, so to speak, as a microbe. Uh, no evidence of more than one abiogenesis on planet Earth. So there's very little reason to play that game. Um, to, to indulge in that speculation. But he did that with he did it also with the multiverse. He just threw it out there like this is that this isn't just complete made up fantasy. <laughs> you know, it's just Yeah. I, I, sorry, that's it, it's it's fine and good for scientists to do that, but do it in the context that you know, let's just play with this thing a little bit. Um, and, the, you know, they're playing with it too seriously. So anyway, but otherwise, just as a style thing, it was just, yeah, ugh, didn't like it at all. So anyway, just, you know, it took them five minutes to do everything. Five minutes to not even explain, but just to illustrate with a little, with cartoons. Um, you know, the transition of brown bears into polar bears. <laughs> they didn't even do it accurately. I mean, they implied that one day polar bears just got white. You know, and it, maybe they didn't just get white all of one day. Maybe only their face got white and then the rest of them got white. Maybe only their paws got white first. Who knows? But it's, uh, you, you know, so they just made that part up. Just made it up. Oh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah, they spent five minutes doing, you know, and then these, they had these cartoon animations of animations, um, you know, whatever. Um, anime. <laughs> anime. 
of historical characters and, uh, you know, I don't see much point in doing that stuff. Just the facts, please, ma'am. We don't need the little, little, you know, up close and personal with the um, scientists of history. You know, especially when you, you, really, you don't really have the whole story anyway. You're just making up a story out of little details, little bits and pieces. So anyway, enough of that. So this Carla de la Stella, who is just so irritating. But anyway, she posted this as her common sense refutation of antinatalism in seven seconds. Obviously, it's more than seven seconds worth of crap to read. All right, um, common sense, here we go. Suffering argument. It is common sense that being alive and not suffering is better than not suffering merely because one has never been born. So, being alive and not suffering. Is there any such... So, she says it's better to be a microbe than a rock. So, if you're a non-sentient microbe, it's better than being a rock. Why? <laughs> yeah, no, there's no reason why. So, that right there, the, this, this statement, being alive and not suffering. So, if you are sentient and you don't suffer... I don't think that's a condition that any sentient thing has ever existed in. I don't think any sentient thing has ever existed in some state where it's in perfect and perpetual bliss. I mean, that's what not suffering is, is bliss. So, that statement is not possible. It's not ever been endured on planet Earth. So, you can't make a statement that's never existed and make it a comparison. It's just there's kind of useless. It's like saying the three pigs is better than never being born, being one of the three pigs. Even if you said that, <laughs> how do you know? Were you a three pig? You, yeah, maybe, right? Anyway, uh, therefore, AN doesn't really prevent suffering in the common sense. So, therefore, AN really doesn't really prevent suffering. So, this is just another, it's totally illogical. Obviously, shutting the switch off prevents the switch. Anything that happens when the switch is on, it prevents. And if suffering is part of when the switch is on, and it only exists when the switch is on, it obviously does prevent it. So, it's just silly to say it doesn't prevent it. Your argument is, is there something valuable in your, your silly, you know, whatever, rubbing your little goo snatch and going, ooh, ooh, um, that somehow you're doing something that's worth the suffering, and that's the laughable part. That, yeah, I would argue you haven't done anything in your entire existence to justify the horror um, of, you know, just the, 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 maybe even just a rabbit, you know, being, um, you know, dying of some horrible tumor disease or something in the wild with no morphine. Yeah. Uh, just like killing a cancer patient wouldn't be seen as a legitimate method of preventing his suffering. Well, that's pretty silly too, right? Lots of people think it's quite legitimate once the cancer owns you to gracefully get the fuck out. Lots of people would choose that if you gave them the right to choose it. They would choose it. They would choose to exit gracefully instead of exit at 48 pounds. So... That's not even a reasonable statement. Instead, one tries to cure and save his life. <laughs> you know, what we try to do, you know, <laughs> is, is doesn't have much to do with being rational often, right? We try to win the lottery. That's what people do. They buy lottery tickets. You're going to use that as an example of logical behavior, sensible behavior? No, we do lots of silly things. And the fact that we are afraid and scared and we behave in erratic and irrational ways because of that fear does not mean that none of us are capable of pleading with people not to be emotional assholes, not to be overreactive assholes, not to be underreactive assholes, to recognize that the only way problems get fixed is we have to fix them. There's no God going to come to save the day, no Superman, no underdog, no Aquaman, no Batman, None of that shit exists, okay? It's us or nothing. It's us or crude dumb forces. And we ought to have the courage to step up to the plate and be logical, sensible beings and do the right thing. 
This isn't rocket science. <laughs> an eight-year-old could understand this. Yeah, I think an eight-year-old could understand that if, if grandma is suffering horribly and her eyeballs being popped out of her head by a tumor, um, that, you know, even though he'll miss grandmother or she'll miss grandmother, that it's probably better that grandmother doesn't suffer the actual process of having the eyeball pop out of her head. I think an eight-year-old can understand that. Um, <clears throat> I think an eight-year-old can understand gambling with somebody else's welfare. Like, if you handed an eight-year-old a pair of dice, and you told the eight-year-old, see those little skull and crossbones on the dice? Well, if those come up on the dice, your sister gets her leg cut off. Now, if the little happy Barney the Dinosaur show up, okay, you get a chocolate ice cream cone. Now, the kid can sit there with those dice, and I think even an eight-year-old can understand, wait a minute, seems to me that the risk is really bad, really, really, really bad. And the reward is good, but nowhere near good enough. No, 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 no. I'm not rolling these fuckers. I'm not an asshole. Yeah, I think even an eight-year-old could figure that out. <laughs> you know, I think eight-year-olds could figure out if you spelled it out to them. We're going to paralyze, you know, take a classroom of kids, you know, and say, we're going to paralyze one of you so we can all watch you play football. Let's see. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound too right either. <laughs> yeah. Can't we do something else? Like, can't we play, like, uh, Tomb Raider? Yeah, can't we play like, a video game or something? Harmless, nobody gets paralyzed. Can we do something where no one gets paralyzed? Alright, imposition argument. Yes, no one was asked to be born, but so what? Well, it's really kind of important. When you're rolling dice with somebody else's welfare, that's a significant deal. And if you can't, you know, if you really should be asking their consent. Or have some reason to believe their consent is, yes, go ahead, have fun. <laughs> You'll pull a straw for me, will you? Yeah, and if you can't, you shouldn't. If you can't, you shouldn't. Why should anyone care about this? Because logically, it only makes sense. I don't want you rolling dice for me, bitch. You can't understand that? Yeah, I don't want you foolishly thinking you can play games with my welfare. I find that obnoxious. So unless you got some kind of serious plan and some kind of serious guarantee, I don't want you picking up no scalpel and heading for my ass. Uh, when it was not possible to be asked for anyway. Well, again, the fact that it doesn't, you, the fact that you can't get consent doesn't change your behavior any at all. You still have a choice. So consent has nothing to do with your decision, okay? It has to, it's a factual circumstance that you're doing it without consent. The fact that you can't get consent doesn't change the fact that you're doing it without consent. Your choice is variable. Your choice can be yes or no, okay? There's no can't. You can't make the right decision. That doesn't exist. So the fact that there is no consent, no possibility of consent, doesn't change the fact of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, People don't really care that they didn't have a choice to be born. Well, that's why somebody wrote a book called Better Never to Have Been. Um, but obviously people are expressing, I'm expressing it, and others have also raised their hand and said, me too here, uh, that yeah, we do care. Okay, we really, 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 really care. Okay, we find this disgusting that you assholes are going to keep putting us at jeopardy to play your silly game. That we're going to be the fodder for that. The victim. I mean, I don't appreciate it. I don't respect it. I don't admire it. I think you're disgusting, horrible, arrogant, obnoxious monsters. You're stupid as fuck. <laughs> yeah. They might care that their life sucks. Well, even if your life doesn't suck. I mean, again, you just don't get it. The fact is, is my life, okay, it's not been easy. It's been sucky enough where I had a taste of it. And I said, ooh, 
that tasted bad. But what I'm really afraid of, what I really find offensive, is the, wow, there's a ton of people got it worse than me. There's no way I want to be born in some African goddamn ditch. There's no way I want to be born in Indonesia or Islam or some other shithole. Um, no way. No fucking way. <laughs> and yeah, it scares me. It scares me to live on this planet with you sadistic motherfuckers. Uh, if it sucks... Yeah, too light dimmed. Um, but not about the fact that they didn't have a choice to be born itself. Okay, so they might care that their life sucks, if it sucks, but not about the fact that they didn't have a choice to be born itself. Well, again, I do. I find it obnoxious. I wish there would have been somebody who would have, you know, had a little bit of a serious conversation with my mother and explained a little bit of the facts of life and the risks she was taking and the chances taken, and she would have done maybe differently. She would have behaved differently. She, in hindsight, recognizes the folly of her experiment. Um... She watched her daughter die, and uh, she realized that, oh, gee, this is just a very nasty mess I got myself into. And um, so, but yeah, regret isn't going to do any good, right? Somebody regretting a decision isn't going to fix anything. What has to happen is people have to be prevented. You have to prevent the future crime. Lamenting the past crime doesn't do any good. If their life <clears throat> doesn't suck, they certainly don't complain that they didn't have a choice to have a good life. If their life doesn't suck, they certainly don't complain that they didn't have a choice to have a good life. Well, they can certainly be damn grateful that they were spared the horror, but find it horribly frightening that the horror will continue, that there will be kids who have their arms ripped off by wheat combines in the future. The kids will end up paralyzed at 10 years old in some stupid football game, spend the rest of their life drooling on themselves, and they find it horrible, the prospect um, of, of that meager, grisly, difficult, um, pointless survival. A futile existence in pain. Yeah, that sounds pretty awful. Which shows that the imposition argument is a mere rhetorical contrivance. Well, again, it's just it's so idiotic to call it a, a rhetorical contrivance when the very word imposition says it. Um, you're clearly playing with something that isn't yours. It's not your consciousness you're putting at risk. It's not your welfare. You're not the one who will be born with one eye or some other kind of shit. Um... It's clearly an imposition. It's clearly based on your own arrogance and your own needs. It has nothing to do with any requirement, any urgency in nature. You're not going to prevent a harm by doing it, that's certain. So, <laughs> rhetorical contrivance that you don't have a counter-argument for, quite obviously. Uh, it is not the lack of choice itself that is uh, bemoaned but bad experience had during life. Well, obviously what's being bemoaned is the fact that this decision is made by arrogance and obnoxious, self-indulgent um, emotionalism, nonsense, culturalism, silly reasons why people have kids. They do not have them rationally. And that is being bemoaned. If you people had a really good argument for your obnoxious optimism, then somebody could make sense out of it. But you're just walking up to me and telling me it's worth it. And nowhere in my brain can I calculate this worth. And so, um, yeah, I find it obnoxious that you will uh, presume to um, play God when you haven't proven uh, the quality of your perception, the quality, the, in, the perfectness of your judgment. <clears throat> and, yeah, enough of that. So, moving on to comments more generally. I'm waiting for my computer to do that. Do, 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 do. 
I don't know why it does this. No, I'm just asking you to load the damn page, fuckhead. Come on, browser. You can do it. Alright. I just take these commenters or something. So I'm stupid. We got the Gins bitch who's what you gonna bitch. I don't know what that means, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's the what the fuck video. I don't even know what that is. Good night, Sam. <laughs> Nobody cares, suckhead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You posted two comments to do that. I think I'll just fuck you off. Oh. Goodbye, Sam. See ya. It's pointless. Alright, application of self. This is a truly incomprehensible sack of mush. A true free market would look like evolution. No, it wouldn't. Evolution is about uh, niche exploitation. Okay, the free market is about ownership of an economy. Not the same thing at all. Um, it would have equilibrium in the same way that life on Earth has achieved a delicate balance. There's no delicate balance. All right? It exists in constant change and constant turmoil. The balance changes every day. Uh, and it, there's, in any condition it would be in, you would call balance. So it's just, it's just silly. Um, there's obviously been mass extinctions. There's no get del delicate balance in that. There's been things have hinged on stupid events. The snowball rolls down a hill and decides the fate of a zillion organisms. There's nothing delicate about that balance. Um, and equilibrium is just, you know, you did put it in quotes, but it's, it's a silly word to use. Uh, the, obviously, there is no, there's no equality in the, like, say, the, the arrangement of the ant colony. <laughs> you know, the, the uh, total investment in one ant's genetic code at the expense of 99.9999999% of the rest. That balance means someone's going to have to be the fish that literally eats shit straight out of the hippo's ass. There's no such reason why any of that has to exist. The diversity on Earth could have been, didn't have to be something sustainable in the sense that there could clearly have been infestations that would have wiped everything out. They just didn't happen, but they certainly could have happened. So it's not a gonna have to be kind of argument. Um, it could revert to a much simpler dynamic of big, small, and just one big and one small, and that's how it works. So again, these, these are, there's no rules obliging any kind of outcome like that, and you certainly can't compare it to the, the function of um, what happens in the dynamics of a free market which is an unsustainable, um, you know, snowball effect. It goes down the hill, the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it gets so big it crushes under its own weight. Um, the unsustainability of the arms race, for example. These are unsustainable things that don't have an equilibrium. They have a beginning and a failure. They, they will fail uh, catastrophically. Someone's going to have to be the host parasite that eats from the inside out. Again, that doesn't have to exist, so it's more bullshit. And even then, you have dominant groups emerge like dinosaurs, and then after that, mammals spout out humans who now lay waste to whatever the fuck they feel like with our monopoly on dominion over the earth. Well, yeah, but obviously monkeys and simians and apes didn't have dominion except for the last 10,000 years. So our kind hasn't had much of a dominion, and the dominion is a struggle for existence, so what's the point of it? Um, and again, we haven't lived long enough to even be judged by natural selection, and I would argue that our judgment by natural selection is going to be colossal failure, as carbon poisoning seems <laughs> the inevitable fate. So this doesn't, again, you can't call us successful or, or having dominion, when our reign of terror has only lasted 10,000 years. I mean, it's silly. And again, it just doesn't deal with the evolution. Is, it has nothing to do with, in any practical way, you can't use evolution as a model for anarchy. Evolution does have um, um, 
mechanisms of selection built into it, rules that have to be obeyed, where anarchy would have none. The, the chaos would be, um, the only rule that would exist is that power will get you more power. That there will be advantage to standing on somebody's corpse when you go to kill the next guy. And if you can get enough corpses above, underneath you, you will have an advantage in the next fight. That the gladiator is made stronger by stealing the other gladiator's sword. That kind of idea. Like in a gladiator war, there's advantage. If you win the first battle, you steal the weapon of the first guy you kill. Now in the next battle, you're going to have an advantage because now you have two weapons. That kind of thing. Um, that's the mechanism. And there's nothing in evolution that does there's there's lots of different mechanisms in evolution but evolution just doesn't parallel that because we're not fighting gladiators in that direct obvious way we're fighting gladiators in selective arenas called niches of environment i mean if you're really going to say who dominates what dominates earth the 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 oldest the most primitive life forms still dominate earth in vast <laughs> they win by a long, long, long shot in terms of total mass. Um, they've gotten us beat a thousand to one or a million to one. Uh, Billion-year-old microbes still roam the earth, still rule, <laughs> you know, so fuck you. We're just uh, eccentric little add-ons of, um, of no significance if it wasn't for acquiring language and, and defeating evolution, defeating natural selection, stepping above it and beyond it. Anyway, um, good harsh some points, volcano crack me up, blah blah blah, ooh, person's vagina, blah blah blah, mend them all you have to say is a real piece of shit, well fuck you. Um, oh that's on the uh, JCPNL sucks video. Yeah, you know, I have to do an update on that because I, you know, it's really bizarre. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe if I have the page, yeah, I still have the page over, I'll just throw it in here, you know, maybe I won't get around to it. But, um, it really is funny, these, these stupid insulators just screw in, which, you know, I remember the box I had had riveted ones in. But anyway, and there's, it's a standard part, but you can't buy it. So this stupid piece, this piece is only four inches long. This stupid piece, right, I've, I got it on eBay for $250, that's how, that's how high I've seen it gone. This one's $59, $59, it's just a piece of fucking resin and two metal clips. But look at this thing, right, this, 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 this is like some kind of Windows conspiracy thing. Bill Gates must be behind this. But, I mean, it was hilarious. $250. Like I said, somebody was selling just this. $250 for one. I, I mean, obviously no one's going to be stupid enough to buy that. But I just mean, it's just, it's bizarre. And so you can buy the whole box that has two of these in it. You know, for 40 bucks, And they just screw in. So there's just two screws go right in there. See, mine's just broken in half, so these two pieces are separate, but they're also crumbled. When they broke, it crumbled. But, um, I mean, it's just bizarre. So I, I have another box that actually has broken ones, you know, one end's broken on both of them. And I was thinking I could just saw them in half, you know, cut the two halves and then put the two halves together. <laughs> yeah, and get around it that way. But the ends might not go the right direction. You know, these little thingies have to go that way. So I don't know if that'll work out. I'll have to figure that out. Yeah, the two would be the same. Yeah, they'd be opposites. So that would work. Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, enough of that, though. I'll get back to business. I, I'm just saying, I, I was amazed. I looked on the internet. I looked every, you know, I can't find, you can't buy just this piece. I mean, they call it a, a, a stab here. And they give a number, but the number's not really a part number. And they call it a lug here. But I mean, it's bizarre. Meter box stab. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is stupid. Um, so yeah, I smell conspiracy. That's all I'm saying. 
that, that this is a true, real conspiracy theory. There really is something going on here, right? Because you can't even buy them from China. You can't buy them. And then I'm all I have to say, oh, that's a piece of shit comment. Yeah, well, fuck you. An idiot. Uh, let's see, Molly Hugh, blah, blah, blah. I'm all against FDA regulations. Someone gets poisoned, but no, that didn't, okay. Cory Anton, who cares, and blah, blah, blah. People have an order called Gary, a cult leader, who cares that? Uh, I I'm only a well-known nut job. Well, it's obviously not known to be a nut job by the crazy sycophants who follow his ass. Wherever he goes, supreme fascist. Uh, uh, oh, there's Carla again. If I earn money, why shouldn't I be allowed to give it to someone as a present? Um, because this is a game of life, right? So the most fundamental part of the game we're playing, the race, um, is this competitive race. Okay, we're going to have a competition and we're going to re reward people with privilege if they do good in the world, if they accomplish and do all this stuff. And so it clearly can be metaphored to a game that way. Okay, and why, you're just asking me, why shouldn't I be allowed to cheat the game? Why shouldn't I be allowed to give a horse in a horse race a head start or put a jet pack on his ass or something? Why shouldn't I be able to ex extend privilege in the race to individual horses and then still call it a fair game? Why well, I really love, let's say you have a little gooey vagina for like some baseball player and... Um, does that mean you should be allowed to give him a steel bat so he can hit more home runs? <laughs> yeah, so they should change the rules of baseball just because you have a gooey vagina? I don't think so. I earned it, so I should... Did you? I don't know, did you? Did you? I mean, this earning thing's a little tricky, right? Because there's lots of 17th generation money out there. Did you really earn it? Did you fairly race the race? Did you start where everybody else started? Hmm? So I should be free to do with what... Uh, so I should be free to do with what I want. Well, I guess there's a word missing. I guess the it is missing. Um, as long as I don't harm anyone. Well, again, isn't it quite obviously harm? Isn't the game of life quite harmful? You're not going to concede that losing the economic game isn't harmful? It's catastrophically harmful. <laughs> okay, being short, you know, you're you're going to business and all you need was another $10,000 and you could have survived, but you didn't survive the two months where the other guy went out of business and you would have owned the, the market or something like that. I mean, we, you know, you crash and fail based on these little tiny things, you know, you get some sort of disease in your third year of college, little silly things and you're harmed all over the fucking place. Your life is fucking goddamn ruined. So to sit there and pretend that it doesn't harm the game or harm anyone if you're going to change the winners and losers based on, you know, sliding cheat to tickets in their pocket. Yeah. You know, putting aces. I mean, this is like it's a card game and you're sticking aces in their pocket. And, and you're saying, what harm is there? It's not like there's any stakes here, like no one's going to lose their house, no one's going to have crisis and horror. You know, this is the most important game we're playing, and you're basically saying you want to cheat at the game. You want to create cheaters. And I'm saying that doesn't make any sense. It's fundamentally and catastrophically illogical. Why shouldn't I be allowed to give my children... Why shouldn't I be allowed to give to my children? Well, you, you are allowed. I'm saying go ahead. Give them the best education. Give them the best food and health care and the best, the best um, head start to the finish line. Feed them really well. Make them into really good athletes. Tiger Woods them all you want. But once they get to the game, you can't cheat no more. They have to actually earn it. Tiger Woods has to win golf tournaments. He can't just win because his daddy says so. Because daddy bought him the cup. Alright, he has to do it on the course. So there's, but uh, quite obviously his father gave him a huge advantage, okay, by, by giving him the opportunity to play golf instead of doing the shit that other kids have to do. Um, and so he had a huge advantage. Um, but it's a more a legitimate advantage. We're saying, we'll give you that. Go ahead. 
be a nepotist, even though all children are valuable, you think only your children are, okay, I'm going to call you a nepotist and an ignorant slut, but regardless, that's oh, forget about that. Forget about cheating. Go ahead, give your kids the best health care, the best food, the best education, the best tutors, the best everything, but don't pretend that they should get a cheat in the game and tell me it's okay. Cheating's okay. No, cheating is not okay. If you're going to have a game where people are really going to die, where people are going to fail and, and be tortured for it, if that's the, the stakes of the game you're going to play, you're going to claim you don't have any obligation to safety net or do any of this stuff. This, this, this high wire we're going to walk is the real fucking deal, and you want to make it even realer because you'll punish them hard if they fail. And then you're going to tell me, but I also want to cheat? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, so I'm allowed to spend the money for myself. Well, again, I don't think, okay, the advantage sh should be something you, you're allowed to expend on yourself all you want. You're allowed to accrue and be a pig if you want to be a pig. You want to waste resources on yourself, go ahead, be a selfish pig. But you have no right to, to cheat the game, to create cheaters, to cheat somebody else out of their destiny because you bought them a ticket to Harvard. So now they can't go. Yeah, fuck you. That's cheating. But I'm not allowed to give it to someone as a present. Again, I'm not allowed to give somebody some extra aces when they go play cards for real stakes against people who might lose their house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're not allowed to let people cheat. Yes, cheating sucks, cheater. Uh, if the state doesn't like the person, I give it. Yeah, well, you can't give it to persons. You want to give it to causes, that's okay. So there's, there's plenty of opportunity for you to invest in space travel or health care cures for diseases or doing all kinds of stuff. But yeah, no, you can't give it to persons to cheat the game, to create dynasties of ownership. Yeah, that's cheating. I mean, you can't start a game of Monopoly and say, I'm the blue blood, I get to have Park Place and Boardwalk, and then we're going to say go. I mean, it's just plain cheating. Just because someone else is rich doesn't mean that you have become poorer. Well, this is just idiotic. Obviously, it matters where you are on the track, okay? If a horse has a head start, it has a head start. That's a fact. It's got a huge advantage. And only one horse gets to win. And only one horse gets to, you know, there's only three horses that get to fall in the category of win, place, and show. This is a really hard game, all right, and people will be brutally beat up in it, and they may die in this game. Again, and you're saying, I should be cheating. I should be clear of the traffic. I should be put so far ahead that somebody has to catch me and pass me, and I never have to pass anybody. I never have to risk going through the damage. I mean, in a race car race, right, wouldn't that be a huge advantage if you get to start off and, and, you know, two laps ahead or something. So you never have to pass anybody. They have to pass you. Um, da -da 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 -da. It become poor by them being rich and therefore deserve to have his money. Become poor by them becoming rich and therefore deserve to have his money. Well, again, they're not trying to take your money. They're just saying this is the game, okay? We're supposed to have a game of merit. We're supposed to earn it. We're supposed to prove we deserve the privilege. That's what everybody thinks. Everybody calls it that. All these people think they did that when they cheated. But that's basically the game. It's supposed to be something that has something to do with your character. Okay, give the trophy to the person who earned it. Uh, where, what sport do we have where we don't do that? Where we give it to the person who didn't earn it, they just bought it. Show me the sport where we let uh, the sons uh, automatically have a head start. We give them a, a big cheat advantage. Show me the person who can inherit a driver's license. Show me a person who can inherit a college degree or a doctorate. You don't inherit your father's doctorate, do you? 
And why? Because everybody would know it's bullshit. It's nonsense. You didn't earn it. Um, <clears throat> inheritance ab abolishment has nothing to do with fairness. Well, again, I just... Anyway, it's just such a ludicrous statement. The, what, what can you say? Again, it, you know, the only way it can have something to do with fairness is if you're not going to acknowledge that the, the economic game is a game. It is a contest. Um, and it's a high stakes contest. So if you're going to say it's not high stakes and that it can't be a metaphor to a game, then maybe you can make some argument, but there's no way you can deny the, the fact that it in, in no way measures up to anything you could metaphor as a contest. So you don't want to have a contest. You just want to cheat. You just want some sort of non-contest where we measure people based on who they came out of. <laughs> and that's it. Nothing else. No race. Just give it to the blue bloods. Uh, it's just central planning, utilitarianism, and fosters more... Well, I don't know why it's central planning has anything to do with it. it it's, a, it's a rational overview. You're going, to call it, you're going to call it central planning when they establish rules for the game of baseball or football or soccer and say that certain players don't get to wear steel toes in their shoes and nobody else does. Nobody's going to make that argument that that's called central planning. <laughs> Fosters more selfishness and greed. I, I don't exactly how the how possibly could having a fair game where merit determines um, privilege. Uh, how could that possibly be perceived as creating selfishness and greed? Because then everyone is only allowed to work for their own good. <clears throat> well, I, I, again, working for somebody else's cheat, putting cards in somebody else's pocket so they can cheat at the game is not doing admirable work. It's not doing anything good for somebody. It's cheating. <laughs> Jesus Christ, cheating isn't a good thing. Then you might as well simply abolish all private property. Well, why? You, why do you say again, why this extreme statement? Why, again, you can enjoy your property. You can enjoy what you've earned. You can have a nice life for yourself, a comfortable life, but you have to know that your your cubs have to learn how to live in the real world, right? Do lions give to, get, get, get to inherit? <laughs> you know, they don't inherit anything. They don't get to go into the world with an advantage, okay? You know, I got extra money, you know. They don't, money's not going to do them any good, right? There's no There's no way for the parent to give them any advantage they can take with them once they're independent besides what they gave them genetically and what they gave them through education. So yeah, give your kids the best um, encouragement you can, give them the best, uh, um, make them as strong as you can, but understand that when they get in the game, they got to play the game. You just, you want to cheat. You want to say that, the, no, their father gets to go with them through the rest of their life and fight their battles for them. Father's money can fight the battles for them. I mean, it's just such a gross cheat. I mean, if all you know, if that happened in the lion world, you know, like like some eternal lion, he lived forever, and he just sat there and protected all of his cubs in life, fought all their battles for them. Come on, everybody, be, all the other lions would find that really obnoxious. Take everyone's money and let the state decide what to do with the money. Well, again, that's not the only option, but yes, uh, you know, the, the the government, the idea of a civilization. Yes, let the civilization. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> make it re-earned, reconvert the carrots into incentive carrots to create more productivity. Obviously, your holding of wealth is holding of carrots, and you're saying, I don't want incentive carrots in the world, I want guarantee carrots in the world. I don't want to use the value to encourage other people to do better. I want to use the value to create a cheat for my kid. So, yeah, you can put it in whatever words you want, but that's all you're doing. That's all you're saying. You're saying, I want to, I want to, I want to take some of these, the, the, the power of incentive carrots, and I want to sneak them, you know, into my kid's pocket, all right, so he can cheat the other horses. <clears throat> then everybody is working for 
the board collective. Well, again, that has nothing to do with the subject. No, everybody's working for their own earned privilege. Okay, not a cheat. Not not to cheat. So they're not living on a cheat. They're not collecting a cheat, and they're not promoting a cheat. So yeah, nothing wrong with earning it. Um, like good worker drones. Again, there'll be less worker drones. All right, our entire economy will be. Um, more active, there'll be more people involved in being able to purchase the means of production. The whole thing runs so much better because the people who would be controlling it would have earned it. Having the people who control it earn it is going to create a much better world than people who didn't earn it controlling it. Man, yeah, no doubt about that. I you give me you give me you give me ten years of a duplicate planet where I um, abolish inheritance and I could demonstrate without a doubt my world would be so much better than your world even two years but whatever ten years no doubt about it um, there's no no doubt about it that it's in the social interest to create a good fair game Ah, watch less television. That's not much of a response to her. There will be no inheritance abolishment without prior state abolishment anyway. Yeah, well, whatever. You're not going you're not to abolish the state, you silly person. And, um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. When you greedy bastards get yours. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get yours. Oh, uh, it's going to fall on you good and hard. Anyway... Uh, this deserves a lot more views. Who cares? This black guy shoot it, face palm, gun, government, blah blah blah. Oh, that's poker face. He's really stupid. Let's see what he said. The government's been spraying people for years, and this guy trusts the federal government. Oh, this chemtrail crap. You know these people are so silly. Um, so so what's the chemical? What's the proven harm? Um, demonstrate that this should mean something to anybody. Oh, that's right. You can't do that. You, I, I could point out a million things the government's done, um, eradicated smallpox and polio, that overshadow any of this harm by a zillion, an actual zillion to one in terms of the harm ratio. <laughs> so, fuck you. I mean, this is a silly. So this is a silly, silly. It's just silly. Uh, especially compared to what malicious behavior corporations would be up to without regulation. Can you imagine corporations? They're unregulated. Unregulated corporations in terms of their emissions, um, the, the poisons they put in the water, all that. Unregulated. Unfucking. And this guy is going to sit there and point to chemtrails. I, I mean, can you get sillier than this? No, you can't get sillier than this. Why am I? What am I doing on this stupid fucking planet? All right, 